Okay, so starting with number 15 <clears throat> on page 16 and 1.2. Um, again, do what you can because you can. So the first thing they tell you are that these two angles are congruent to each other. So we know that they have the same measure. So we can put in our little arcs and our congruent tick marks. Um, and then they tell you that angle 1 is x plus 14 and angle 2 is y minus 3. So do what you can because you can. These two angles are congruent to each other, therefore x plus 14 has to equal y minus 3. Okay, so that's my equation. Then it says solve for y in terms of x. We're just going to add 3 to both sides. And we get our x plus 17 is equal to y. We solve for y in terms of x. Um, we're moving on to 1.3, number 3. B, here it is. So our G, E, and D collinear. So in other words, can I take G, E, and D and make a straight line? Are they all in a straight line together? And the answer is no. Um, it says our F and C collinear. So from this picture, um, it doesn't appear that there is a line there. Um, however, F and C, any two points can create a line. Um, so that's kind of a technicality for 3B. Um, they are collinear if there was a line, um, which there technically is. Um, so as of right now, you could either put yes or no as of right now. And we'll get into that deeper. And then 13. Um, so I want you guys to understand, if you guys have a long piece of spaghetti and you were to crack it into three pieces, sometimes those three pieces won't create a triangle. Hypothetically, if you took this long piece of spaghetti and cracked it in with two little smaller pieces, as you can see, like let's say this was one inch, one inch, and 15 inches, um, that's not going to make a triangle. So um, in order for it to make a triangle, the two smaller sides, small plus small, has to be larger than the biggest side. Um, in this case, we don't know which side is the smallest and the biggest. and So what we can do is we can just plug in um, the sides. So I'm going to do it with colors because I feel like that makes more sense. So if you were to add the pink and the blue together, that has to be bigger than the orange. So any two sides have to be bigger than the third side. Um, if you were to add the pink and the orange together, that has to be bigger than the blue. And lastly, if you were to add the blue and the orange together, that has to be bigger than the pink. So all three of these scenarios must be true. Now we can obviously go in and anywhere we see blue, we can put a nine. Anywhere we see a pink, we can put a six. And anywhere where we see an orange, we can put an X because we're trying to figure out how big that is. Solving my first inequality right here. And I can zoom in a little bit. Solving this first inequality, we have 15 has to be bigger than X or X has to be smaller than 15. Um, solving this second inequality right here, I would subtract 6 from both sides and you have X is bigger than 3. And this last one right here, you'd have X is bigger than negative 3. Now, of course, um, we're going to reject the negative answer because we can't have a negative side length to a triangle. Um, so this actually answers both of your inequality questions. X has to be bigger than 3. And I'm going to flip this one around. X has to be smaller than 15. And you can see where the number 3 came from by just subtracting those. Um, so this, for example, can be 3.1. If it was exactly 3, it wouldn't form a triangle. And again, just thinking about this, if you have this piece that's 9, and this piece right here is 3, and this piece right here is 6, right? If I was to close these and they were exactly 9, I wish I could show you guys the motion, but if these closed to make exactly nine, then when you opened them up like this, they wouldn't reach at the top. They wouldn't connect. They'd be not connected. So that's why it has to be larger than three. 
Um, and then again, you can see where the 15 comes from by adding those numbers together. So AC must be smaller than 15 and AC must be larger than three.